We sat in the bed to sit all night. Hercule sat crying, saying how kind his mate was. She didn't move at all. I, I didn't think she'd last till dawn. For me, who loves badgers more than anything, the death of a badger is the worst thing that can happen. I clung to Hercule's neck and wept with him. But at dawn, Shadow was still alive, still weakly breathing. Then Toad came in with his rat friend. Hercule stood on him. Oh, oh watch it, matey! Step on a toad for good luck, eh? <laughs> it didn't hurt you, did I? I'm kind. Oh, a ratty friend. Hello, chum. Yeah, hiya. That balmy stag is outside. He says you bit him and he's gonna kill you. You didn't bite him, did you? Oh, I'm so ashamed. Yes, I did. I, I bit his fat lock. Very unkind, I know. Oh, what a soppy badger. His mate, she's dying. No, I'm not. I'm all right, I think. Do stop crying, Harkle. Shadow, dearest. You see how kind she is? When she's so ill, the first thing she thinks about are my silly tears. Oh, I do love her. I love you both. Hey, yuck, they're making me sick. Is there a badger in here? Oh, hello. Hello. Are you him, the famous Farthingwood Fox? You look very young to be so famous, but kind, kind. I'm Plucky, Fox's grandson. Look, did you bite Trey, the chief stag? Oh, yeah. I did. Well done. Well done. He was outside in the worst temper I've ever seen him in. I told him the other stags were getting friendly with his hinds. He was off like a rabbit. But if you see him again, pretend you've never met him before, that you're not the badger that bit him, or he'll stamp you flat. Very kind of you to offer such advice. I'm Hercule, by the way, and I'm kind. <laughs> When they threw Weasel and me and our little ones out of the farmyard, Weasel blamed me. But she's gorgeous even when she's angry, I think. Oh, <laughs> Then there was a storm, and we all got soaked, and even the little ones were calling me a twerp. I've never been sure what a twerp is, but I was one. They were right, a twerp. Yeah, a bad weasel, a rotten father. Everything was black in the storm. We were sinking in muddy puddles. When I saw it, a single light, I led my family towards it. A dry, roomy byre. In we nipped, and there he was. <laughs> a big, old, crusty donkey chewing a carrot. Pum 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 pum. Watch this. Not weasels. Madam, kindly pick your litter off my floor. Horrible old horse. Sido, don't be impolite. He's not a horrible old horse. He's a horrible old donkey. I pulled the gun carriage in the wars. I'll have you know. I don't like weasels. Clear off. We wondered if perhaps... Just for tonight, we could, because of the inclement conditions outside... Just for tonight? Our little family could just one dry corner? Or the dampest of your four corners to rest our whiskers in. Clear off! You're just like those other donkeys, the ones that used to stand outside in the field, always wanting in. Huh. Ever pull a gun carriage in the wars, I said to them? Of course they didn't. Anyway, they died in the cold last winter. It served them right. Now, clear off, weasels. Yick! Mice! There's mice in here. Mm, I hate mice. Uh, we can see to it that you're not bothered by mice. <laughs> can you? That's right. But only if you allow us to stay. Uh, very well. I'm Colonel Donk. Did I tell you I pulled a gun carriage in the wars? Yick! There's a mouse. Weasel was gorgeous, brilliant, the epitome of a weasel. She dived between the old donkey's legs, moved so fast she was just a blur, fizzing through the straw. All I did was sneeze, and when I'd finished my sneeze, there were a nice little pile of dead mice in the middle of the floor under the bright light. We weasels tucked into the best meal we had had since we left the farmyard. How very disgusting. I was so proud of myself. 
I'd found us a home sweet home. Weasel, Fido and Cleo were full of mice and sleeping softly in the straw, dry and safe, with me watching over them proudly. I was a good father, oh. <laughs> the bad weather passed away, and next morning the sun made the puddles yellow. The little ones went out to watch Colonel Donk do his exercises, while I, <laughs> I, I, I cuddled down beside Weasel. Um, Weasel? <laughs> Do you... <laughs> do you love me? Uh, this morning? Well, measly, perhaps I do. Yes, I think I love you this morning. Oh, yeah, she loves me. Ark, ark. What's this? You're sitting on my carrot. Oh, I am sorry. The oh, size's not good enough. Mum, that old bag of bones kicked me into a puddle, and now I'm all wet again. You kicked my little one. Sort him out, Maisley. I am um, uh, uh, an accident, was it? Certainly not. I saw a weasel and I kicked it. Now the lot of you clear off. This is my buyer. I don't want verming like you in it. Clear off. Uh, but the mice. You said if we stop the mice from bothering you, that we could stay. What mice? We ate them. So there's no mice to bother me, is there? Now clear off. Snark, snark. Colonel Donk followed us, eeyawing, until we were out of his field. Where would we go now? I'd no idea. But I told Weasel that I knew of a nice, safe place. It was my fault, she said. I'd said something to upset the nice old donkey. I was a twerp again, a homeless twerp, and a bad father. Oh. <laughs> Don't you come up here? It's Plucky. He's missing. I've looked everywhere. The squirrels have looked everywhere. He's disappeared. How is it anyway that a fox and a rabbit are such good friends? I'm not a rabbit. I'm a hare. Well, I'll fly around and look for him, shall I? Oh! Oh, Dash! Run for your life! Rats! Rats in the bushes! They're coming for you! George Ratties, get that rabbit! I want rabbit for my lunch. Oh, my! You'll never catch me! Never catch me! I'm much too fast! Where'd it go? Catch it! You're too fat and slow! I'm the fastest ever, I am! It's got away, oh great one! Oh! That was my lunch, you know! Oh, my! Holy, 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 I kept on running! Running, running through the forest, jumping between the trees, hopping high over logs. But all the while I was watching the rats, especially that big one who wanted me for its lunch. I followed them to that old lightning-struck tree beside the fence. That's where they lived, in that sinister tree and in tunnels deep down among its roots. Ugh, rats! Call a meeting of the elder animals to decide what to do about this. We may have a war on our hands. Uh, excuse me. I, I know I'm new around here, but could I be an elder? I'm kind. Of course, Hercule. Toad! Toad! Here I am, matey. <laughs> I was looking for Plucky. You're not mad. Just thought I'd tell you. Not mad. Oh, thank you, matey. Very kind of you to say so. Oh, he is kind. He's very kind. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
I had been flying about for days, trying to follow the directions which that jealous female owl had given me. Lost! I admit it. Yes, quite lost. And no owls anywhere. Just human habitations, fields, hardly any trees, for goodness sake. Late one day, I saw a gloomy little copse. I was so tired, I'd lost three feathers since daybreak. I swooped into the copse. The sky was still bright, but in the copse it was dark. Untidy lumps in the branches were the nests of an old rookery. I thought it was deserted. But just as I was settling for a kip, a very small rook indeed edged along the branch to annoy me. Well. Ah, good evening. Well. I don't have any worms. You haven't perhaps seen any other owls in this copse, have you? Big, handsome males, perhaps? Well, really. You'll get nowhere in life just saying worm, now will you? Oh, what an utterly infuriating little bird. It's only a chick. Oh, so it's you. You moth-eaten rook, you. Huh. I followed you from the bell tower. I love you. Ben! Is this chick yours? Mine? No. I haven't a mate to have chicks with. Not yet, anyway. But uh, if you will consent... Don't you dare ask. I'm an owl. You're a rook. A moth-eaten rook. Don't be so ridiculous. I love you. I do. I want to be your mate. Oh, look! Look! You're a rook. Why don't you fetch this obnoxious baby rook a worm? Tell me you love me and I'll fetch it a worm. I love you. There you are. Satisfied? Oh... Oh, she loves me. Yes, I'll fetch a worm. Oh, oh. The moment he flapped off to look for a worm, I swooped away as silently as only an owl can. I kept close to the dark fields. I had tricked the moth-eaten object. I was gone into the falling night and left him with a broken heart he so thoroughly deserved. I do warm heart. I do. Plucky was always my best friend for all our lives. Just because he's a fox and I'm a hare, no reason not to be best friends. Now he was missing and I was exhausting myself, dashing here and there, looking for a sign of him. I had every squirrel in White Deer Park helping, and every hare and rabbit, and Whistler patrolling the air. Not a sign. Plucky had disappeared. Then a squirrel came to me and said his whole family had disappeared too. A hedgehog had the same story, but also said that he'd seen squirrels being put into a cage by humans and driven off in a van. He took me to where he'd seen this, and we sat there waiting for the van to return. We waited three days. Three days spent talking to a hedgehog. Ugh! Men jumped out of the van. Men with nets. They grabbed that boring hedgehog. They netted squirrels. They netted cousins of mine. Put them in cages and drove away down the road. Fast they went in their rattling van. But I was as fast. Whee! I ran. I ran alongside, my whiskers brushing their tires. Oh, I was fleet. No one ever, anywhere, has ever been half as fast. But suddenly, the van disappeared, and I was left behind in a cloud of dust. It had driven through spiky-topped gates behind a high wall. There was no way in. But that's where Plucky was. I knew. I knew. <coughs> hey, sheeps! <coughs> sheeps! <coughs> Stop ignoring me, sheeps! I just want to ask a question. Ask away. But we're not sheep. We're sheep. 
We get nasty if we're called sheeps uh. once too often. I just wanted to ask you something. Which you? We're all yous. <laughs> I just wanted to ask, that place down the road there, the big wall and the spiky top gates. What about it? What is it? What goes on there? <laughs> Answer me. Anyone who asks a sheep a question gets the same answer. <laughs> but my friend is in there. <laughs> Talking to the sheeps. It's a white deer park here. It'll recognize us. It's Dash. Yoo-hoo! Maisley, you twerp! Hey? We don't want that rotten lot to know we're homeless. But I've married a useless weasel who's a bad father, do we? Uh, no, weasel. <laughs> I'm Rolo. I'm the sheepdog, but I'm no good at sheepdogging. I'm frightened of sheep, you see. But I was thinking in my doggy mind, when I saw you and your little weasels, that perhaps I could give up being a sheepdog and become a weasel dog. I'm not frightened of weasels. Oh, oh, can me and Cleo keep him? A big, fat, hairy dog of our own. Please, please! Oh, a um, uh, uh, weasel? What do you think? A weasel dog? Uh, yeah, all right, we'll keep him. <laughs> he can look after our little ones. He can watch out for trouble, hunt, fetch and carry and save us if we're being attacked. As long as we're not being attacked by sheep. That's right. Oh, and one other thing. Perhaps I should tell you about myself. I'm stupid. Oh, no matter. Weasels are clever creatures, and some of it will rub off on you. You'll be thinking double brilliant sly tricky weasley thoughts in no time. <laughs> I can't wait. I thought that Rolo was a useless hairy lump. I didn't need a dog's help to look after my family. But he said he knew where there was a nice, cosy hole in the ground for weasels to make a home in. An old otter's den beside a river. Once we cleaned out the fish heads, it was just perfect. We'd be happy now. My gorgeous little family was safe. And because Rollo's master, the farmer, was always late home from the fields, every night Rollo stole his dinner and brought it to us in a bowl. <laughs> Pies we had. Puddings, eh? <laughs> Uh, no, no, the farmer wasn't Rolo's master. I was. <laughs> Me. Measly was. My own weasel dog. Oh! Who am I? 7,341 ratties. Who am I? 7,342 ratties. Who am I? 7,343 ratties. Psst, psst. What? Oh, I was counting my ratties. You made me lose count. One ratty, two ratties, three ratties. Oh, Spike, it's you, my spy in the enemy camp. I've come to make my report, O oh Great One. I have joined the White Deer Park animals. I have made friends with a toad, and he trusts me completely. Good boy. Oh, thank you, matey. Matey? Uh, uh, they had themselves a meeting of the elder animals, but they don't know what to do about us. Uh, the old fox is all talk, and they admit they can't fight us without the help of the we. The we. We? The we? Where? Where? Oh, uh, Aunt Emmy, uh, well, what they do have, though, or, uh, well, what was it? Well, oh, oh, yes, they got snakes. Oh, I hate snakes. A vicious adder and her mate, sinuous he's called, horrible wiggly things. They looked me right in the eye, said they hated rats, and you know what I said? I said I hate them too, especially that dirty big white one that's always saying, who am I? He's a horrible monster, he is, I said. You said what? Bully, bully, 
bully! There are snakes in the nest. They're wiggling along our tunnels, biting and eating everyone they meet. Protect me! Get all the biggest rats! Spike! Where's Spike run off to? I'm important! I have to be protected from a year! Hello. What have we here? You're a nasty big rat, aren't you? Be, be, be gone, oh foul serpent! Go on, clear off! Am I? Sinuous, do you want the nasty big one? Or shall I eat all of him myself? Oh, you, you have him. I'm full, anyway. Protect me! many did you get, Sinuous? I bit 35 and ate two. I bit 32 and ate five. Did you get the nasty big one who kept saying, who am I? Missed him. Better luck next time. I thought everything was fine at last. I thought I was a good father. I taught my little ones to catch voles. Weasel had hardly shouted at me for days. Oh, I was happier than I'd ever been. But the fish heads in the burrow, they hadn't belonged to some long gone otter. Oh, no, no. The thing that ate fish heads came back home one peaceful morning. We were all cuddled together asleep. Look, measly twerp, father. A meow! Well, go to sleep, I know. Meow! Yes, a meow is what I am. But I'm not a cat. I'm a wild cat. Wild as the wind I am. Meow! Wild as the storm that rips up trees by the roots I am. Meow! Look. I'll show you how wild I am, shall I? Oh, if you like. Oh. Meow! 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 I'll blame you for this! I've been away hunting, wandering in search of tasty creatures. Some I pounced on and ate straight away. Others I played with. <laughs> But I never expected to come home and find a snack of weasels waiting for me. Life too much for you, was it? Too hard. Came here to give yourselves up to the wildcat. I'll eat you straight away, shall I? No time for playing anyway, cos my sisters will be back soon and they'll want to share. You can't keep us! It's not fair! It's the law of the jungle, weaselly one. It's the law I live by, and it's never fair. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I'll sing for you. Cats like singing. Ah, pussy cat, pussy cat, wilt thou be mine? Yay! Meow! I like singing. Here I am, your weasel dog. I've stolen the farmer's breakfast for you. Come and get him! <laughs> In here, Rollo, because the wild cat is going to eat us. For a while, I thought I would never see again. I nearly lost my little ones. All Measley's fault, the twerp. Rollo was a good weasel dog. He fought the wild cat. It scratched and scratched, putting lumps of fur from his face. But he was stronger. He had it by the tail. Oh, it yelled and meowed. <laughs> All this time, we weasels were tumbling about at their feet. But when the wildcat broke through the tree roots, making a hole so that it could escape, Measley and I found ourselves alone in a burst-open burrow. Rollo was chasing the wildcat outside. Fido and Cleo were gone. It must have eaten them. But when we hurried outside, there they were, sitting in Rollo's doggy food bowl in the middle of the river. All Measley's fault. Look at us! I 
Fido and Cleo were swept away in the strong current. Oh, Weasel and I ran alongside the river through nettles and a tangle of tree roots that tripped us up so that all our cries ended with oof. Ah. I ran along an overhanging branch to try and grab them as they passed. I nearly reached, but they just waved, smiling as the river took them away, perhaps forever. I fell in. Maisley, if you drown, I'll never forgive you! Rollo came back, running along the path, his face all scratches. Rollo, I yelled. Fido and Cleo, they're in your doggy bowl in the river. He looked at me for a moment, <laughs> stupid look. Weasel was screaming. I was pulling my ears, going, oh, we were all useless. Uh, then Rollo, he gathered his wits and he ran down the pathway. We chased after. It seemed a very long time before we arrived at the weir. The doggy bowl w w was stuck on a stone under a narrow bridge just above the weir. And on the bridge was the wildcat swinging her paw to try and catch the little ones, stretching and swinging, purring and playing. While I was in the water, swimming dog paddle in the frothy water, any second the cat's paw would catch Fido or Cleo. We were far too far away to help. It was all up to Rollo. The wildcat was stretched as far as she could. The next swipe of its cruel, silvery claws and... Oh, Fido! Cleo! Rollo caught the wildcat's paw in mid-swipe. He tugged it into the water and they splashed, barked and meowed as the powerful current tumbled them over the weir into the boiling, angry white water below. Then the most amazing thing, wasn't it, Measley? The stone that the doggy bowl was stuck on, it moved. It swam. It brought the doggy bowl with the little ones in it all the way over to the shore where we were waiting to greet them. Mother, this stone has a head. <clears throat> I'm not a stone with a head. I'm a terrapin. Well, whatever you are, thank you. You saved our little ones. Where's Rollo? We ran up to the narrow bridge and held on to each other as we looked down into the angry water. No sign of Rollo or the wildcat. Drowned. Our poor, brave weasel dog was drowned. Oh, it's not fair! He was a good weasel dog! Actually, I wasn't drowned. I was a big furry shape floating under the water, asleep. Then there was something hooking me under my collar, and I was going woof with the river still in my mouth. Then I was standing on the bank, coat heavy with water, looking at a man with a big red face. It was my master, the farmer. Hiding in the river, eh? What's your game, you stupid dog? I tried to lick his big red face, but he was not one for licks. You pinched my meal for the last time, my boy. I'm chaining you up with a prize pig from now on. That'll show you. He'll see you behave. I whined. Not because I detested that prize pig, but because I would never see my weasel friends again. In all my life, I'd been useless at everything I ever did. Guard dog, sheep dog, but as a weasel dog, I had been a great success. I'd saved those baby weasels, and if I spent the rest of my dog's life chained up with that prize pig, listening to him drone on about all the prizes he'd won, I could wag my tail and think, yes. Once upon a time, long ago, I was as good and brave a weasel dog as there ever was. <laughs> stolen Plucky away in their van and taken him to the wall place behind the spiky top gates. I told Fox, but all he did was send Whistler to fly over and have a bird's eye look. Whistler is a bird brain bird. I had a better plan. I sat out in the open at the place where the men always came with their van. When they arrived, I didn't scarper, 
My heart was beating so fast. I just sat there. And when their big boots came crunching towards me, still I didn't scarper. One picked me up by the ears and put me in a cage in the back of the van. I was as scared as a rabbit, yes, but excited too, because I knew then soon I would see Plucky again. Dashy, how did you get here? Plucky! Plucky, I found you! Let's have a race. I'm even faster. Hey, what is this place anyway? It's a nature reserve, like White Deer Park. The humans must have thought there were too many animals over there, so they brought some over here. There's deer, foxes, hares, almost everything. And, oh, uh, I'm sort of the chief animal here, like uh, Grandfather Fox is in White Deer Park. No, really? Does that mean you're too important to race me? Never. To that oak and back. Whoops, Plucky. I found you. And, Dash, you were back there when I took off, and now you're here. How? I came in the van. Everything's all right, is it? Well, I'll get back and tell Fox. Actually, there is something you can do. This hedgehog... I must get back to White Deer Park. My mate is useless without me. And these mice... <laughs> you can carry them back in your feathers. But I'm a rotten enough flyer as it is. If I've got hedgehogs and mice crawling all over me, screaming with fright, I, I, I'll probably forget to fly altogether. We'll risk it if you will. Oh, very well then. Climb aboard. Oh, oh that's better. Oh, oh dear. I flew away from that moth-eaten rook as fast as I could. All night I flew, all the next day, not even stopping for mice. And the next day, and the next. But when, oh, my aching wings, I at last rested, settling on the branch of an old beech. I love you. Oh, for goodness sake, how did you get here? I'll never leave you. Never, ever. One more word and I'll... I... I don't know what I'll do, but you'll have no feathers left when I'm finished doing it. I'm going to sleep. You go to the other end of the branch. Off with you. Yes, dear. Of course, dear. I'll just be here if you need me. I need you about as much as I need foul pest. I'm not going to cry just because you say cruel things to me. I know that you've got a warm heart, really. Yes. I have. I do. A warm heart, yes. Now go to sleep, there's a good bird. I love you. When I awoke the next morning, I could see what the night had hidden and received my biggest shock since I flew into that barn door. I was in Farthing Wood, my old home. Farthing Wood. This tree, it was the great beech, the noblest tree of that beautiful woodland. But it was the only tree left. The humans had covered everything with their hutches. Farthing Wood was gone, chopped down, just hutches. Everywhere, hutches. It can't be not farthing wood. Oh, oh. I love you. Come back to me. I was in no mood for being wooed by a rook. I swooped among the human hutches and found an open window under a roof. I slipped inside and went to sleep on the window ledge. Perhaps I would dream of better days, when I wasn't old and tatty, and when farthing wood was all a flower. Of course, I wasn't asleep for three moments when a horrible noise woke me up. Here. Do you see that? 
I don't talk to rats. I eat rats. Nah, you're joking. But did you see that? What? That house cat. It's a real pussy to look at. A big soppy fur ball. But it's had all my litter. Nine of them. Do excuse me, but I'm trying to sleep. Kindly take your tedious problems elsewhere. Don't worry about me. I'm skip-tailing off. I've heard about a place, an animal sanctuary where the rats are taking over. Going to be a regular rat's paradise, they say. I'm a rat, you know. You amaze me. Bye-see-bye, -bye, toodly bye bye Uh, do be careful. The window, please be careful. The window was jammed tightly shut. I was locked in. Another problem. I was in such a tizzy that, well, I'm ashamed to admit it, but I fainted. When I woke up, that soppy pussycat was sitting beside me licking a paw. It purred, it smiled, it fluttered its eyes. I didn't trust it one bit. Hello. It's me. I love you. What are you doing in there? I'm trapped in here, you stupid bird. The window fell shut. I can't get out. You're not just trying to get away from me. Look, I'm stuck in here with this enormous soppy cat. Only it's not so soppy. It's going to eat me unless you do something. <laughs> nice pussy. Nice pussy. I know what. I'll fly as fast as I can against the window, break the window, and you shall fly out of the window, free to live and love in a world we can share. Uh, yes. All right. But be careful. Meow. It'll not work. His plan? No, not a chance. He'll just bang himself on the glass. <coughs> Told you. Oh, dear, dearie me. But perhaps we can have a nice chat while we're watching him kill himself. I don't often get the chance to chat with someone as refined as yourself. Oh, oh thank you. Uh, yes, um, I am refined. But other creatures these days... Not refined. No. I go to cat shows a lot, you know. To be admired. And the other cats... Not refined. I'm sure, no. What's your favorite? Mice? Those? Or nice, juicy, young rats? Uh, frogs, actually. Oh. You're not as refined as I thought, are you? Ah! Oh, what a itty bitty pity. Your moth-eaten rook friend, he's knocked himself out. Are you all right? Oh, the silly object. I eat out of tins, mostly. It's more refined, you know. But my favorite food is nice, juicy, young rat. But I've one other favorite which I haven't had for ages. Do you know what it is? Uh, no. Owl. Owl. We made such a racket that the humans in the rooms below were alerted. A boy and his mother came running up the stairs and the door flew open. This was my chance. I swooped past the humans, down the stairs of their hutch into a bigger room. Strange to say, there were little models of owls on almost every shelf. I broke every last one with my wing beats as I turned to and fro, trying to find an escape. Then a huge wet man, wearing only a towel, was swiping at me with a broom. Twice he hit me and I fell to the floor, but took off again, Lost feathers floating down on me as I fought him away with my talons. Suddenly, he took fright, as humans often do, I find, and ran into the street screaming for help. I swooped out of the open doorway and was gone from their lives forever. 
Around the side of the house, in a cabbage patch, my eyes spied a sad sight. The moth-eaten rook, hardly a feather left on him, his beak bent, looking done for. Uh, how are you? Are you alive? Oh, I love you. They won't put you in a pie, will they? Not you. Oh, no, no, no. Um, I have escaped all by myself. I'm perfectly safe now. Thank you for trying to help. You were very brave. Do you love me now? I, uh, uh, well, uh, I... Uh... Say it, please, before it's too late. Oh. Oh. Yes. You're a good friend. I love you. So there he is. You moth-eaten rook. I've been looking for you everywhere. Oh, are you... Uh, um... I'm his mate. He's always off after owls. Gone all summer sometimes. I think he's dying. No, I've seen him much worse than this. I love this owl. And she loves me. Go on, tell her. Tell her you love me. Well, I, uh, um... It's all right. I understand. He's like this with owls. Yes, I see. Uh, well, I'd better be off. Thank you both. I hope you find him, your nice big owl mate. But he'll never love you half as much as I do. Ow. Ow. I love you. I never saw the moth-eaten rook again. I expect he's bothering some other poor owl somewhere right this minute. But do you know, I shall always be grateful to him. When I met him, it was true what that irritating weasel said. I did not have a warm heart. The moth-eaten rook warmed my heart. And when, shortly afterwards, I met my nice big owl mate, my heart was ready to love him.